inaugural House Democratic Caucus meeting for the 117th Congress. Uh, we're excited, looking forward to getting to work uh, with President-elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, his partner in the White House, to build back better for the people and to make life better for everyday Americans as we deal with this deadly pandemic, which is both a public health crisis and an economic crisis. Our top priority uh, as Democrats will continue to be to crush the virus, provide direct relief to everyday Americans who are struggling, and to supercharge our economy so we can create prosperity in every single zip code. While we're excited, about the opportunities to get to work for the people in the next few weeks, our hearts are also broken uh, because of the painful tragedy that experienced, has been experienced by our dear colleague, uh, Jamie Raskin, his wife, Sarah, and their family connected to the passing of their beloved Tommy. And we continue uh, to stand uh, with Jamie, send our thoughts and our prayers and our support uh, to him, and we will be there for him and with him uh, every step of the way. We're preparing, of course, for Wednesday's proceeding. And let me simply say before I yield to our vice chair in that regard that Joe Biden won the election in clear and convincing fashion. More than 80 million Americans voted for Joe Biden. That's more than any other presidential candidate in American history. <laughs> Joe Biden won blue states. Joe Biden won swing states. Joe Biden won red states in places like Georgia and Arizona. That's what the facts suggest. That's what the courts have agreed took place. That's what the voters decided. Let me now yield to Vice Chair Pete Aguilar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As the Chairman said, this new Congress represents a new opportunity, a new opportunity for the American public, a new opportunity for us to reflect their priorities, uh, this Congress and our Democratic Caucus is focused entirely on making sure our communities build back better. And as the chairman said, the first plank of that is COVID response and relief, ensuring that the funds that we pass to get into every corner of our communities and to make sure that critical priorities that we left behind, like state and local government, are addressed in the future. We look forward to welcoming our new colleagues as well. And as the chairman said, our hearts continue to go out to the entire Raskin family as they deal with this unspeakable loss. Uh, with that, the yield back to the chairman. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. So we know that there are a number of senators and House members and that are Republicans that are going to object um, tomorrow to the certification of the Electoral College for the year comments on, on their actions. The voters have spoken. The Electoral College has spoken. The courts have spoken. Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States of America, notwithstanding the delusional fantasies of some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. But them dragging it out, doesn't it, you know, what is this going to do to Americans' faith in our elections? Well, we're going to continue to lift up the peaceful transition of power as well as the principle of government of the people, by the people, and for the people, which is critical to self-government, which is an integral part of our democratic republic. Without it, we are not a democracy. And that's what we're going to defend in a serious, solemn, and substantive fashion on Wednesday. The House impeached President Trump for a phone call he made trying to interfere in the election on the front end. We've all heard the Georgia phone call now. Should the House take any action over his interference with the election on the back end? 
Yeah, we didn't impeach uh, Donald Trump simply for a phone call, though the phone call was a part of his corrupt abuse of power. That also included the fact that uh, without any justification, he withheld $391 million in security aid from an ally who was under attack by an adversary, Russia, as part of an effort uh, to try to get them, meaning Ukraine, to target without justification Joe Biden. And there were a series of steps that were taken by Donald Trump and his team that resulted in him being impeached for his corrupt abuse of power. With respect to what has currently taken place, I have not viewed the transcript. We're not looking backward. We're looking forward to the inauguration of Joe Biden on January 20th. Following up on that, I mean, the president very clearly has pressured a uh, state election official to overturn an election result uh, and, and to find votes in order to do so. Um, if it is not impeachable, uh, would you encourage the DOJ to look into, into the impropriety of that? I haven't commented on the impeachment one way or the other. I think if today is January fourth, there's 16 days until Joe Biden is the next president of the United States of America. We are in a deadly pandemic. It is a once in a century public health crisis. The chaos, confusion, conflict, and corruption that Donald Trump has inflicted upon this country is something to be evaluated by the historians at this particular point in time. Our focus as House Democrats will remain on addressing the public health crisis and the economic crisis that has resulted in more than 350,000 Americans dying and over 20 million Americans infected by the coronavirus. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to ask about safety on Wednesday. Um, you know, a number of your members are concerned about safety getting to and from the Capitol because there may be demonstrations. Uh, what are you all doing to prepare for that? Or is there going to be a memo from the Sergeant at Arms? It's my understanding that there will be a memo from the Sergeant at Arms uh, that is forthcoming uh, and that the Capitol Police and that the authorities are going to take all necessary precautions. Most importantly, to protect the public, to protect the staff, uh, and, of course, to protect members of Congress who may be in harm's way. Last question. Um, you had passed the $2,000 checks in the last Congress. Do you have any plans to pass the $2,000 checks in this Congress, either before or after January 20th? Well, we have to pass the rules package uh, today so that our committees can be constituted and we can actually begin to move uh, bills to the floor of the United States House of Representatives. I anticipate that that will happen. Uh, once that occurs, we can begin uh, the process of addressing substantive legislation. Joe Biden has been clear uh, that the coronavirus relief package that was passed at the end of the preceding Congress is just a down payment on the type of relief that we need to provide to the American people on a going forward basis. It remains to be seen from the administration's perspective, uh, whether that includes $2,000 relief checks. From my perspective, I think that's unfinished business that should be continued uh, as part of our effort to provide additional relief uh, to the American people. The coronavirus relief package was meant as a short-term intervention for the first few months of the year. And let's see where we're at in terms of how we move forward in the context of the impact that the pandemic continues to have on everyday Americans. I'm sorry, I do have one more question. Um, can you speak to the nature of the gender neutral language that's used in the rules package? From my standpoint, the gender neutral language is just consistent with an effort uh, for the House in the best tradition of the House to reflect the gorgeous mosaic of the American people in the most sensitive fashion possible. And the House, of course, is designed to be the institution closest to the American people to reflect, 
the hopes, the dreams, the aspirations, the fears, concerns, anxieties, and in the words of the framers, the passions of the American people. It's the reason why the House has a two-year term, much to the dismay of many of my colleagues, but understandably a two-year term as opposed to a four-year term for the presidency, a six-year term for the Senate, life tenure for the Supreme Court. It's because we're the institution that's supposed to be most intimately connected to the gorgeous mosaic of the American people. And in my humble opinion, this is just a reflection of that. Any final thoughts? Thank you, everyone. <laughs>